In this video, I'm going to try to do a brief introduction to the problem of endogeneity and uh, two-stage least squares to solve this problem and how to actually estimate these models in R. So I'm going to have to move very fast. Uh, one of the assumptions of the Gauss-Markov theorem or, or when ordinary least squares is a good idea is that the residual, the error term, has to be unrelated to the explanatory variables. And so you run into a problem where OLS does not work. It will not give you the right answers if the error term is related to one or more of the explanatory variables. And this most commonly occurs when you have more than one equation that are related to each other at one time. A common example of a situation where you run into this problem is if you're trying to estimate demand and supply at the same time. And I'm using a little data set from Comenta, a 1986 econometrics book. And this data set is included in R, uh, the statistics package. And so you can download and install R and you can play along at home to see how this works. So. In Cominta's data set, he has a quantity variable, food consumption per capita, price, so basically think about it as the price of food, and D is income, disposable income, F is the ratio of last year's prices uh, for food to overall prices. So think about F as being an indicator of how much farmers will grow this year normally we see that farmers grow uh, crops this year based on what prices they saw last year. It makes sense that if say the price of corn is very high last year more farmers will grow corn this year and A is time in years. Now in this data you might want to estimate a demand and supply equation and let's look at this demand equation right here. We all know that the quantity demanded is related to prices according to the law of demand and incomes among other variables. And so we could estimate this equation for Q with a y-intercept, a slope on price, a slope for income, and a stochastic error term. However, what will happen if you try to do this? Well, let's just look at uh, the scatter plot of this data, price and quantity. Well, you can't just run a regression of um, quantity on price or price on quantity. Normally we put price on the y-axis, though if you wanted to run a regression, uh, think about Q as being the y variable where we would flip these two axes. But if you wanted to draw a demand curve here, where would you actually put it? I mean, um, maybe there's a demand curve right here, but um, if you were just to run a regression on these uh, points as you see them right here, the line that you would get would, uh, I don't know, probably go somewhere through there. But you have to keep in mind that what you're seeing with a simple scatter plot like this is not a set of points where uh, price and quantity are changing ceteris paribus, everything held, held equal. What you're seeing here is a uh, vast array of probably a lot of different demand curves and a lot of different supply curves. All you get to see in any given year is the equilibrium. And so this point right here is an equilibrium price and quantity of a demand curve and a supply curve. But we don't know how that demand curve extends out and how that supply curve extends out. And so um, there are supply shifters and demand shifters going on at the same time. If you don't take into account that there are two equations, um, you're going to run into this problem where the residual is related to explanatory variables. And here's briefly how. Uh, suppose in a given year, for an unexplained reason, 
people really wanted a, a large quantity. People demanded a high quantity. For some reason, we didn't know. That would mean a high error term. That high error term, since people are running out, buying a lot of the product for an unexplained reason, that's going to push the price up, right? And you can also see that when the price gets pushed up, that is going to affect the supply. And so you've got these two equations working uh, with each other, and you've got obviously this relationship between the stochastic error term and price. That's what we call endogeneity. Now, how can we solve this problem? Now, there are packages that will do this sort of automatically, but you need to understand what's going on um, rather than just clicking a button. You have to divide your variables into two parts, endogenous and exogenous. So exogenous income, if you can say that um, people's incomes on average in a country are not directly tied to um, supply and demand for uh, for food or, or or more particularly the uh, the quantity and price and if uh, last year's prices aren't related to um, quantity and price this year and if time a um, is not related to P and Q this year they are exogenous. They're determined outside of the supply and demand equilibrium. Um, supply and demand aren't going to determine last year's food prices or this year's income for most people except for farmers. And uh, it's not going to determ determine what year it is. So those are exogenous. But P and Q are determined within this system endogenously. And so here's demand, here's supply, and here we're assuming that the quantity demanded is a function of the price of food and people's incomes and that the quantity supplied is also a function of price but uh, in addition last year's prices and uh, the year so there might be some kind of time trend throughout the years now how do we separate these two effects there are many ways but one of the most common methods is called two stage least squares let me break down for you how that works Okay, here's the step if, steps if you wanted to estimate a just the demand equation, then the supply would be somewhat similar, and I'll, I'll give you an automatic way to do this after we do this by hand. But in two-stage least squares, basically the procedure is take P, the endogenous variable in the demand equation here, and run a regression of P on all of the exogenous variables, D, F, and A. And when you're done with that regression, use that regression to predict your p hats. That's the predicted value of the dependent variable in this case, which is, is p. So you run the regression, p explained by the exogenous variables, and then predict the values from that equation. And basically what you're doing there is removing out the endogenous part of p, and you're just using the systematic part of P that is related to D, F, and A. And instead of using the real prices when you try to estimate this demand equation, we're going to use these P hats instead. So let me just show you how this works in R. Okay, here I've opened the R statistics program and see my other videos if you uh, need to figure out how to download R or just do a uh, an internet search for R project just one letter R project and download and install it I'm going to show you two ways that you can do two stage least squares first the kind of by hand method and then second using a built-in command but you're going to have to install a library uh, or a package here called SEM SEM stands for simultaneous equation modeling and so go to packages install package choose a download mirror in a country near you and then go down through this long list of packages here until you see SEM and uh, install it just lowercase SEM and I've already done it so I will cancel this um, after you install it you're gonna have to load the library into memory library SEM and that's where the data is um, 
this commented data. And so if you just want to um, look at the data, you can uh, type data. K-M-E-N-T-A, it's got to be a capital K. We can do a summary of that data, K-M-E-N-T-A. And you can see those variables, Q, P, D, F, and A. And let's go through this procedure by hand to estimate a demand curve. Again, regress P on the exogenous variables, predict the P hats, and then regress P on, sorry, Q on P hat and D, and that will give us our demand equation. So in order to do that, we can um, first stage, uh, do a regression. I'm going to give it a name here. So TSLS stage one equals um, LM for linear model. We're just going to run a regression here of P and then tilde explained by the exogenous variables D, F, and A with plus signs in between there. Whoop, it didn't find P. My error. Um, there are a couple ways to do this. I'm going to do it today by typing uh, data equals commenta. Uh, that tells it to find these variables P, D, F, and A in the commenta data set. And we can look at that regression. Uh, summary um, TSLS. Uh, one. Now there's nothing here actually we're interested in because uh, all we really want to do is predict those p hats and let's save that to a new variable. So we can call these p hat equals predict and we want to predict the, the uh, value of the dependent variable which in this case is the p and um, so just tell it to predict from this regression we ran called TSLS1. So predict TSLS1. And let's look at those. P hat. <clears throat> this is just a list of what would the predicted values of price be in this equation that we just ran. P explained by income, last year's prices, and years. Now that was the first stage, getting those predictions. Now the second stage, here's where we're really estimating our demand curve, is to um, run the regression on the equation we were uh, looking at here. We're going to estimate this, but instead of using the real prices, we're going to use these predicted prices. And so real quickly, we can just do um, TSLS equation stage 2 equals uh, runner regression LM of Q explained by the P hat and income which is called uh, D in this data and let me tell it again data equals commenta and now if we do a summary of this regression TSLS2 in the second stage these are the parameters of our demand equation this tells us that uh, price has a slope of minus 0.24356 uh, on quantity. For each additional dollar, quantity will go down by 0.24356. And as income increases, the uh, quantity demanded will increase by, uh, sorry, demand will shift by 0.31399. Um, actually, as price goes up, quantity demanded will go down. Now, instead of doing those two stages separately by hand, uh, you can actually do this in R. As long as you locate, sorry, load this SEM library, and uh, rather than go through exactly how to do this, I'm just going to show you how to uh, bring up the example that's already in R itself, so that uh, I'm because I'm running out of time here. Just type um, help. SEM. Oh, sorry, not SEM, but uh, TSLS. Help TSLS. And there's a command for two stage least squares called TSLS. And this brings up this exact same example and it shows you what to type in what order. And you'll get exactly the same uh, slope for price and uh, income for demand as I did doing it by hand. Good luck.